Well, good evening, everybody. This is Mark Vines, and welcome to the Mark Vines podcast. Thank you for joining me tonight. And if you get a chance, visit my Facebook page, Mark Vines Show, and give us a follow, give us a like. I'd love to hear your feedback, love to hear your reactions. And we talk about all things related to the greatness of the United States and how we're going to keep this country great and how we're going to win this election in November. And I'm going to read to you um, and analyze an article that I have here from the Daily Mail that is going to give you some indication as to why uh, we need to win this election, why it's important that the people that have put us through the misery for the last three and a half to four years need to be prevented from being into office, as if you didn't already have enough reasons for that to be the case. We are going to go through an article that I found in the Daily Mail, and I want to share with you and analyze some of the things that we are seeing and uh, really just show you why we need to put a stop to some of the crap that is going on and really take a deep look at at some things that have happened and the fraud that's been purchased perpetrated upon you guys uh, in our nation, and we need to make sure that this does not ever happen again, and those that were responsible need to be punished to the full extent of the law. So what am I talking about here? Well, we have uh, an article um, by Reuters and Jeff Earle, who's a deputy U.S. political editor for the DailyMail.com. So again, out of the Daily Mail, and it's titled FBI Lawyer Pleads Guilty, Two falsifying document used to get spy warrant for Donald Trump's campaign aid and could face up to six months in prison. So now, why am I going through this article with you? Okay, well, it's the Daily Mail. And if those of you that don't know, the Daily Mail is in uh, the United Kingdom. And I go to Europe on a fair amount. I won't, I won't say a lot. I go there on a fair amount. And I, one thing that uh, I will say, when you travel overseas, for you Americans that have never been overseas, you become very, very aware when you're overseas that uh, people in other countries are very aware, hyper aware of what happens in the United States. Now, many of you have absolutely no idea what's going on in their country at all, but they seem to be very aware of what's going on in our country. Uh, when I go overseas, I can turn on the the television in the hotel and I will see news channels, and I, and I mean news channels in that country, that uh, spend the bulk of their evening talking about American news and not even the news in their own country. That's the importance that the America plays around the world. And it's kind of stunning as an American to go around and, and see uh, how people watch us. Now, along with that, when I'm watching the news programs, I realize that the news is very, very one-sided, and it's painted in a way that you know that uh, statements are made in the people reporting the news and the people receiving the news, for that matter, don't understand our system, don't appreciate our system, and don't understand our history and why we do what we do. And some of that comes through in this article, and that's why I wanted to go through it with you, because this is important. And, and the, the, you know, the news and opinions uh, overseas are a bit different than what we have over here in the United States, and it tends to be pretty left-wing. It really does. So let's go through this and just dissect this a bit, because it's important to talk about. So the article says FBI lawyer Kevin Kleinsmith pleaded guilty on Wednesday in federal court to falsifying a document as part of the bureau's early stage probe into whether President Donald Trump's 26 campaign colluded with the Russian government. Now, remember, Mueller has gone through this and concluded that that did not happen. Kleinsmith, who previously quit the FBI, is the first person criminally charged in an, inv- in an investigation by John Durham, a federal prosecutor tapped to probe mistakes the FBI made when it sought a warrant to conduct surveillance on former Trump campaign advisor Carter Page. Now, um, take that, that paragraph right there. It says he made mistakes or the mistakes the FBI made when it sought a warrant to conduct surveillance on former Trump campaign campaign uh, campaign advisor Carter Page. Folks, this was not a mistake. People don't go to jail for making mistakes. Do you understand that? Never in my law enforcement career did I put anyone in jail because they made a mistake. Not unless they killed somebody. But we put people in jail because they intend to conduct an act. We have to demonstrate intent 
This was not a mistake. So keep that in mind as you read this article or as we go through this article. It says, It is unclear if Kleinsmith has flipped and will be a witness for the Durham probe in the future or simply pleaded guilty to seek a lower sentence. Well, we don't know that, but uh, I can just tell you from experience that uh, <laughs> when you have something lowered from five years to six months like he did, you're usually doing that uh, because you're cooperating, but there's no way of knowing that for sure. But during the, a virtual hearing in the U.S. District Court in Washington, Kleinsmith admitted to doctoring a CIA email the FBI used in 2017. Now, listen to that closely. Admitted to doctoring a CIA email. Remember I was just talking about intent? Well, there you go. He admitted to doctoring. This wasn't a typo. This wasn't a mistake. This wasn't spell check changed it on him. It was intentional. There was intent. So when and when it applied for the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court to review its application for a secret wiretap to monitor Page. At the time, I believed it was information I was providing in the email was accurate. And that's Kleinsmith saying that. He says, I believe that the information I was providing in the email was accurate. But listen to this. But I am agreeing that the information I inserted, right, there's your intent, the information I inserted into the email was not originally there. And I inserted that information. There's your intent. And he said that during the hearing. U.S. District Judge James Bosberg said his sentence due uh, date uh, for December 10th. Well, Kleinsmith could face a statutory maximum of five years. There you go, which is a felony. The U.S. sentencing guidelines in this case call for a range of zero to six months in prison. Uh, Bosberg said the crime making a false statement to the FBI that would be uh, for you FBI people that'd be uh, 1001 uh, U.S. Code 1001 is the same as the one that Michael Flynn Trump's first national security advisor pleaded guilty to and is now trying to reverse out of so you see how they throw that in there right these are two different cases you know I, I I've never worked a case and then referred to an unrelated case and, and said, you know, we'll look at that case over there. I, I just love how the article uh, throws this in. These are, these are wildly different cases. These are very different things, but they're trying to lump the two together. So they're making this political. Last week, Donald Trump crowed that a corrupt FBI lawyer in James, James Comey's very corrupt FBI was expected to plead guilty. That's just the beginning, I imagine, Trump said. The fact is they spied on my campaign and they got caught. The case does not, in fact, relate directly to spying on the Trump campaign. So I love how they throw that in. So I don't really know what it was if that's not what, what the case was all about. It was. Now, Lindsey Graham, the South Carolina Republican senator, said at the weekend, uh, this weekend, that he believed Kleinsmith knows where the bodies are buried. He added, something tells me that Mr. Kleinsmith knows where the bodies are buried, and if I were in the FBI working on Crossfire Hurricane, and that was the Russia investigation, I would be very worried right now. And I think I, I would be too, if that was the case. So guilty pleas and probes like Durham's are often in return for cooperation, which is true, as was the case in the Robert Mueller inquiry. Right. But you do know that all of the uh, indictments that Mueller had had nothing to do with Trump. These were people that committed tax evasion and, and cases that in some cases had been over a decade prior and also in some cases had been turned down for prosecution. And then they resurfaced again 10 years later. But I digress. However, the hearing and other court documents offered no indication of involvement in Klein Smith's crime by anyone else. Well, that's kind of a curious statement. I, I don't know. I mean, the, these court documents are related to him and his plea agreement. I don't know why in those documents there would need to be any relation to anyone else. That's not always the case. So this is not really an inaccurate statement because it, it doesn't have to relate to anybody else to be true. Now, the Durham investigation, which is also examining the intelligence community's assessment about Russia's election interference, has caused caused deep concern among Democrats, oh, I bet, who view it as a politically charged exercise meant to re-litigate re, uh, re an already closed investigation. No, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Are they talking about Russia? So, all right, so they're saying that they, now this is an already closed investigation. Then why, in God's name, do we keep hearing about Russia if it's already a closed investigation? I agree. It is a closed investigation. So according to the Daily Mail, they should stop talking about this, right? That's what it's saying right here. 
So the Democrats believe that this is meant to relitigate an already closed investigation and fair criminal charges or public reports issued so close to the 2020 election could be timed to affect November's vote. Now, now wait a minute, wait a minute. Have I mentioned Biden's name in this at all? Or Kamala Harris? Has either name come up in this at all? What, what does it matter then if, if those uh, names are brought up? What does it matter at all? Well, the the investigation has proceeded alongside a parallel effort by Senate Republicans to discredit the Russia probe, and as Attorney General William Barr has escalated his own criticism of the FBI's probe. Well, I don't know that this is necessarily the Republicans trying to discredit the Russia probe. I think the the Russia probe proved that there was no collusion on the part of uh, Donald Trump. Is is that not what it came up with? Am Am I correct about that? That's exactly what it came up with. And we are already seeing that the predication for the case, meaning the information that you had that justified the opening of the case, was tainted, altered, false, and uh, incorrect and politically motivated. So you notice that the article does not talk about that at all, which is very interesting. Um, Durham has not said who it is targeting. Of course he's not, because it's an ongoing investigation. The public doesn't have a right to know that yet. But Trump has made clear that he wants Comey, Barack Obama, and his other top intelligence officials charged and has ranted that they committed treason. Now, he's a politician now. He's free to say that. He's free to say whatever he wants. But it's pretty clear to me that that's not affecting what Barr uh, is doing. You know, Barr, folks, uh, Bill Barr, I have to say, is a consummate professional. Do you not get the sense when you hear this man speak that the adults are home? You know, you've had this wild party going on. The rock band came over. You had the kegs there and you were partying your butt off. And then mom and dad came home. Don't you get that sense when Barr comes in and when he talks? Do you really think that Barr, who does not need this job, You know, he was attorney general before. He's been around forever. He was retired. He didn't need to have, he doesn't need money. He doesn't need anything. He's just trying to do the right thing. And he came home and the mom and dad are here. The adults are back in the house and the party is over. And you're going to clean up. You're going to sober up and you're going to go the hell home. Unless you've been drinking and then you're going to spend the night and then go home. That's Bill Barr to me. Right. Barr foreshadowed the legal action in a Fox News Channel interview on Thursday night in which he said there would be a development Friday that was not earth shattering, but would be an indication that the investigation was moving along. Justice Department policy directs prosecutors not to take investigative steps for the purpose of affecting an election and frowns upon taking public actions in the weeks before an election. Well, this shouldn't be affecting an election because... Nobody on the Democrat side has been named in any of this. What are they so worried about? Why do they keep bringing this up? Nobody's mentioned Kamala Harris, and nobody has mentioned Joe Biden. Hmm, I wonder why they keep bringing this up. But Barr has said he did not feel constrained by that policy, in part because the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee, here we go, former Vice President Joe Biden, is not a target of Durham's investigation. Huh. And Barr has signaled that he will look to make Durham's findings public before the election. I think as he should. We need to know these things. Kleinsmith was referred uh, for potential prosecution by the department's inspector general's office, which conducted its own review of the Russia investigation. But now remember, the the inspector general investigation does not have prosecutorial authority. It it really does not have teeth. uh, And people forget that. You know, people talk about um, Horowitz and and, uh, the IG report and the inspection. They they don't have the ability to prosecute. What Durham is doing is a very, very different thing. Now, that review found that the Russia probe was opened for a legitimate reason and did not find proof of political bias. That's not entirely true. What they said was the political bias was so rampant, they could not pinpoint any one particular person or one particular action that um, caused this all to happen. But it was just so it was rampant that it was uh, that it was a real problem. If you have not gone back and looked at Durham's report, at least in the executive summary, go back and take a look at that. I, I know 
most people don't read that stuff, but it would be worthwhile. But it also concluded that the FBI made significant errors in omissions as it applied for secret national security warrants to eavesdrop on former Trump campaign advisor Carter Page. Now, <clears throat> significant errors and omissions. Listen to that. Errors and omissions. Folks, this is a big deal. If the FBI puts out a an electronic warrant on you, that's a big deal. And if they, it, you know, when it comes to lying, you know, when I used to teach interviewing and interrogation, you, ha- you have like two major forms of lying. You have acts of commission, meaning meaning I overtly lie to you, like I lie to your face. That's commission. And then acts of omission, meaning I don't really lie to you. I just don't give you all the truth. But that's still lying nonetheless. Commission and omission. So omission is just as bad as commission. It's just a different form of lying. And that's what happened here. And as we go into this election, knowing that this is how the FBI was operating, and I believe that the the, this, the knowledge of this was at the highest levels of the government, um, it may not be a big deal when it's somebody you don't know, like Carter Page, but if this was you... I think you would find that to be a very, very big deal. And this lying through commission or omission would be a big deal to you as well. So don't gloss over this, okay? Specifically, the inspector general accused Kleinsmith, though not by name, because they said lawyer number one, lawyer number two. Guys, we're talking about Kleinsmith here. They're really getting into the weeds on this. They, they know who they're talking about. Um um, it, it, although it not did not mention him by name, uh, it did say that he was altering it, an email about Page to say that he was not a source for another government agency. Now, we know that he was. Page has said he was a source for the CIA. The Justice Department relied on that assertion as it submitted a third and final renewal application in 2017 to eavesdrop on Page under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Kleinsmith told the inspector general that from his conversations, he did not understand Page to be a source or a recruited asset or to have a direct relationship with another uh, government agency. But, but listen to this. Listen to what it says after this. But that relationship was seen as something important to disclose to the FISA court. Of course it was, especially if Page was being tasked by the government to have interactions with the Russians, which we now know that he was. Kevin deeply regrets having altered the email. What? I thought it was an accident. He altered the email, Schur said. It was never his intent to mislead the court or his colleagues, as he believed the information he relayed was accurate. But Kevin understands what he did was wrong and accepts responsibility. No, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Um, well... If you were accepting responsibility and you think that what you did was wrong, then okay, then then it was intentional, right? That's the way I read that. That's why he's pleading guilty. Durham is the U.S. attorney for Connecticut and a veteran prosecutor with a history of special assignments from Washington. Former Attorney General Eric Holder selected him during the Obama administration. Whoa, whoa, what? Former Attorney General Eric Holder selected him during the Obama administration to investigate the CIA's harsh interrogation techniques of terror suspects and the destruction of videotapes documenting that interrogation. So, folks, when we get closer to the election, and and mark my words, this is going to happen, when they try to tell you that Durham is just a political hack operating for Donald Trump, I want you to think deeply about what I just said to you. Former Attorney General Eric Holder selected him, meaning Durham, during the Obama administration. Huh. Well, you just wait until we get close to the election and see what they say about him then. So Barr appointed uh, Durham just weeks after special counsel Robert Mueller concluded his nearly two-year investigation. Mueller found significant contacts during the 2016 campaign campaign between Russians and Trump associates, but did not allege a criminal conspiracy between them. No, because they were an incoming um, uh, administration, and that's what happens. Uh, They're dealing with not only Russians, but uh, officials from all over the world. Mueller also examined multiple episodes in which Trump sought to affect or choke off the Russia investigation, but he did not reach a conclusion on whether Trump had obstructed justice. No, he realized it was a bunch of crap, and that's why he wanted it to end, because it was wasting time for the American people, uh, the administration, and it was just a waste of money, frankly. 
Barr signaled his skepticism with the Russia investigation right away, concluding that Trump had not obstructed justice, even though Mueller had pointedly left that question unresolved. He left it unresolved because there was nothing there. More recently, Barr stepped in to dismiss the criminal cases against former Trump administration national security advisor Michael Flynn, even though Flynn pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI, and Barr overruled prosecutors to seek a lighter prison term for Trump confidant Roger Stone. The Republican president commuted Stone's sentence last month, which he has every right to do. And uh, that whole case really had nothing to do with any Russian collusion either. So, uh, folks, what we've got here is sort of whitewashing and glossing over the fact that this was a big deal and this person, Kleinsmith, violated an American citizen who is exercising their protected First Amendment free speech rights, the same rights that you and I have. Using that information and lying about this person and destroying this person, destroying their reputation, destroying um, everything about them and everything they stand for, for political motives. Uh, you know, Klein Smith is one of those guys that uh, uh, when we looked at uh, Strzok and Page's um, texts, you know, the, the, the famous texts that were put out. Kleinsmith was doing the same thing. He texted out Viva la Restance. Uh, he talked about, um, you know, made very derogatory comments about the uh, about Trump and the rest of the administration and all of these things. He was very, very anti-Trump, which was very, anti, very unprofessional. And <clears throat> it's pretty clear he did not want Trump to be president, and he was willing to go to any length to make sure that Trump did not become president, and was willing to do so um, at the expense of other people and the ability to lie uh, in order to achieve his goals. Folks, um, I've been in law enforcement my entire life. I was either law enforcement or military my entire life. This is something that <clears throat> I'm absolutely um, ashamed of of in the organization. It's something that needs to be cleaned out. It needs to be ferreted out. It needs to be dealt with. It needs to be dealt with harshly. And the entire uh, cabal down there needs to be erased, taken out, and these people need to be prosecuted. We have to have the FBI. We have to have the ability of the FBI to do what it's supposed to do, and that's to protect us, the American people. But we cannot have this crap going on. We cannot have it going on at all. And you are going to hear all kinds of stupid insinuations. Um, you're going to hear all kinds of garbage out there. You're going to see twisting of facts. You're going to see um, uh, really just the politics behind this and, and the ugliness of all of this going on. But when it comes down to it, these people need to go. These people need to be prosecuted. And I'm going to tell you, I'm telling you right now. You mark my words, this is a lot bigger than what you're hearing about right now. It is a lot bigger. It is just the beginning. It really is. And as we approach November, you look over at the, the group um, supporting Biden and, and all of these people, all of these people that we're talking about right now, ask yourself this, who are they voting for? Who are they supporting? And when you read articles like we just went through and we just analyzed right now, and you, you look at that, and, and, and if your blood pressure rises, you just remember, if you're on the fence right now, if you have not made up your decision, I don't know what you're waiting for. This is one of the clearest elections I've seen in my lifetime. What is the clearest uh, election I've seen in my lifetime? You either want to support this crap that went on, or you want to end it. And I'll tell you, the biggest fear that these people have, because they know that when Trump gets reelected in November, these investigations are going to continue, and that's the biggest fear that they have. And that's why you see Barack Obama really turning on the nasty, childish rhetoric that he's turning on right now, because he knows that. And that is what we are facing. And so on uh, November 3rd, you show up to... Uh, to the election. Um, you, you, you've seen in the Democratic virtual primary, they're coming up with plans. You know, you need to come up with your plan now to go and vote. Now, I don't know what's wrong with these people. I don't I don't know about you. I've not gone through barbed wire or machine gun pits or or um, uh, had landmines to prevent me from voting. Um, I usually just kind of show up, go in, show my ID and vote. I, it's not that difficult. So, But apparently the Democrats are telling you how difficult it's going to be. November 3rd, 
get up, brush your teeth, have a cup of coffee, maybe even a donut, and go into the polling place, show your ID, and vote. It's pretty much that simple. There's your plan. If you're looking for a plan, I just gave it to you. Coffee, donut, after brushing your teeth, make sure you brush your teeth. Go on in there and vote, folks. And with that, this is the Mark Mark Vine Show. I'm glad you joined us tonight. Get out, check out our Facebook page and please leave some comments and spread this prod podcast to everybody that you know, even the liberals, even the liberals. Maybe they'll, we'll talk some sense into them. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we can convert lots of people to start loving America again. Because, well, I'll tell you this, I've never stopped loving America and I know if you're listening to me, you haven't either. So folks with that, you have a good night. This is Mark Vines and I'm out. <laughs>